Hello everyone, this is a video on the Atomu device installation. This one specifically for the JZS171 Crown. So I've got all of the instructions here that we supply with them. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through step by step, um, show you how to use these diagrams that are included, um, what they refer to in the actual ECU itself, and obviously what all the wires, colors mean on the Atomu device itself. Okay, so this is obviously what you'll get. Um, we're, we're the supplier for sort of UK and Europe, and then you've got Quantum Auto in the States, uh, Yuri over in Russia, and uh, Calvin in uh, New Zealand. So depending on where you are, um, the closest person you can get can supply you with that. So to start off with, we're just gonna go through the physical colors and what they mean. So starting from this side here, you've got your red, which is um, ignition 12 volts, all right? You've got your black, which is ground, which you've got as E1. You've got your two yellow colors. The first one is two, the second one is park, all right? Then you've got a green one, which is NCO plus, which will make sense in the diagrams. Then you've got the white one, which is NE plus, or the crank sensor signal. Then you've got blue, which is oil. You've got green, which is SP2 plus. So again, you can see all these colors just working their way in a row. And then your last four are solenoid one, two, three, and four, okay? Um, below is sort of a generic diagram, just to sort of show you how they should be connected. So obviously you should be cutting all of the gearbox wires, all right? And then the ones here that you're gonna tap into, and obviously the ones where you're gonna join just from the Atomu device to the ECU. So always remember, to the ECU. Um, I know it sounds silly, but we've had people where they connected this to the actual gearbox harness and not to the ECU, so obviously it didn't work. So I thought I'd get it out of the way from you. So to start off with, we've got all of the plugs down here, okay, and they tally up to here. So you've got this, this one, this one, this one, and this one. The majority of your plugs are gonna be in this middle one, all right, that's for the gearbox. Then you've got crank sensor over here, you've got two and L over here, and then obviously some here, so you've got plus B and uh, E1, et cetera, in these different plugs. Okay, but we'll go through that in a minute. So the way that the diagrams work is if you have a look here, you'll see A14, and I don't know how good this is gonna come up. A14 is A, A16 is C, B13 is D. So what I've done here is if you have a look here, this is obviously B15, which is your um, 31 pin plug so again you'll see in the diagram it goes from 1 all the way to 31 and then you've got B14 which is your 24 pin plug so that's next to it that's that one then you've got B13 which is the middle one the 17 pin plug then you've got A16 which is the 28 pin plug which is like your body plug and you've got A14 which is the 22 pin and that's that one now the way that these work is you'll see one is in the top, so you've got one, two, three, four. Now that's if you're looking into the plugs, in other words, wires facing away from you. So if I'm actually looking at this plug here, so imagine the ECU's plugged in, top right is number one, so it's one, two, three, four, five, etc. till the end of the row, then the next row, then the next row. Now just remember, the numbering is not dependent on whether there's a wire in there or not. The numbering is purely based on the actual cavity that's available so there may not be a wire in there that doesn't mean it's not a number it just means that there's not a wire in there for that specific vehicle okay and so i've written down here that b15 is f b14 is e b13 is d a16 is c and a14 is a now what that tallies to is if you take a look over here you'll see that there's a little circle in the circle is a letter that letter refers to that's why i've put it in these brackets because to try and show a circle Okay, and then you'll actually see the number there. So for instance, SLU plus is 13 of D. So basically it's pin 13 of plug B13 and B13 is this one over here. Okay, so like I said, the majority are gonna be in the 17 pin plug, but that's how you check it. So in all these different diagrams that I have here, when you're looking at the ECU, which is this rectangular part here, you're gonna have a letter in a circle so you refer back to that, so whether it's F, E, D, C, or A, and then the number next to it refers to the actual pin number in there. Okay, so when you're looking down here, you've obviously got, this is your solenoid plug. So you'll see here you've got oil and E2, that's for the oil uh, temperature sensor. SLU positive and negative, SLT positive and negative, SLU 
positive and negative, then you've got solenoid 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, this is where it differs from a JZX 110. JZX 110 doesn't have solenoid 3 and 4. Okay, so that's 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 where the difference lies in this one. So on a JZX 110, you wouldn't use solenoid 3 and 4 wires. You just wouldn't connect them. Okay. But as you can see, this whole row, apart from E2, which is a splice that goes in, but this whole row here is all in plug D, and plug D is that one over there. So that's where you're going to connect all your solenoid wires, one, two, three, four. When you've got the resistors, this is the one. So you see this little circle here, or this little sort of twirly, that's a resist, that's a solenoid. But when you're connecting your resistors, that's your resistor. That's how you're going to connect it. So if you see there, so SLU positive is uh, pin 7 of plug D, and SLU negative is pin 13 of plug D. So you're going to take these two wires, one side of your resistor, other side of your resistor. It's that straightforward. Remember, they do get incredibly hot. So don't put them inside the ECU box. Don't put them inside anywhere where they can get into contact with wires because they can melt through the insulation. Uh, the standard wiring is is not, you know, like 150 degree, you know, motorsport grade wiring. Um, so yeah, don't put it in the ECU box. Put it in the engine bay. Preferably get like an aluminium plate or something. Mount them to there. Act like a heat sink. Brilliant. Okay. So this is where you're going to find all your solenoid stuff. So this is where you're going to find your solenoid one, two, three, four. Um, and then we'll go look at the other ones over there. So if you come over to this side over here, this is now the gearbox selector. So there's your actual gearbox selector. Um, this is your ECU at the bottom here. And you've got basically park, reverse, neutral, drive, two, and L. Okay. And again, you'll see. So it's E, E, C, um, E, C, and C. Okay, and there's the numbers next to it. All right. Sorry, these diagrams aren't exactly super clear. They're taken from pictures from a book. Um, so I don't know how it's going to come out here. But anyway, so when you get them, they are clear to read when you're sitting in front of them or you've got them in front of your computer and you can sort of scroll in. But here on the camera, probably not so clear. Okay, so that's going to be where you're going to find your park and your two. At the moment, um, we are finding connecting it to L is giving a, a better performance. We've had a customer do an actual dyno test. Um, and he's connected it to L and then use one of the different modes. Um, I'll have to check which one of the modes it is um, that he uses. But that, yeah, so for now, we're advising to connect to L instead of 2. But they are both in the same plug. One is 20, one is 21. So they're right next to each other. So that's easy peasy. So next one down here, this is where your speed sensors are. Okay, so that's your SP, which is your um, output speed sensor on the back of the gearbox. That's your NCO, that's your, what I call your input speed sensor, basically it's the speed sensor at the front of the gearbox. So as you can see here, um, we're doing NCO plus and we're doing SP2 plus. So if you come down here, you've got SP2 plus, which is five of D. So again, the middle one. So I said a lot of it will be in here. And NCO is exactly the same. So NCO positive is four of D, which again is the 17 pin plug in the middle there. All right. Now, this is where we get to where you can actually get your uh, power from, okay? So that is gonna be 16 of plug A. So if we throw back to here, plug A is A14. A14 is this one over here. Uh, it's basically 16 and eight are, are effectively the same wire. They're both plus B circuit. So you can pick one of the two. It's 16 or eight. I just picked this one out of the diagram because it's, I can blow it up and easy to see. All right. And then we've got NE plus. So if you have a look here, it's 23 of F. So we refer back to here. F is B15. B15 is our big one down here. Okay, so that's where you're going to find your NE+. Plus. So remember, it is written here. You splice into it. So pretty much all of these so far, oil, SP2, NCO, you're going to be cutting them. You're going to be cutting them, all right, and you're going to be running them straight to the Atomu device. When it comes to NE+, plus, you're going to be splicing in. So you're not going to cut it. You're going to splice in. Same goes for B and same goes for E1. Okay. So um, that's basically all the connections there. I must actually check uh, where have we got E1. Okay. E1 will be the thick brown wire in the bottom right of this plug over here. The 28 pin plug. So you'll see there's a thick brown and a thin brown. So you see E2 is 19 of plug E. E is B14, that's this one over here. E1, which is the power ground, is basically the one next to it. 
So you'll see a thin brown, a brown and a thick brown. The thick brown is the E1. That's the one you're going to tap into for, um, for the black wire over here. Okay. All right. So to get into the notes section, um, obviously we provide the resistors. So again, it just says so you're going to connect the three resistors between SLT positive and negative, SLU positive and negative, SLN positive and negative. So that should get rid of these two codes, these three codes, 1755, 1760, 1765. Okay, there is a bunch of notes here about making sure un, um, the unnecessary gearbox wires are cut from the loom completely from the ECU connector side, but obviously that is illustrated here as well. So you want to be cutting all of these wires, STP, etc., etc. You want to cut all the rest of them off. Okay, and just to make sure that you do connect the black wire to E1, obviously this is tapping into the crank sensor signal and you don't want to end up with a ground loop scenario so don't connect the earth just to anywhere connect it to pin 18 of this plug over here that'll be your e1 all right and now to check if it's operating correctly um, this is obd2 compliant you can plug in a diagnostic machine you can see live data all right so effectively what you want to do is the way that this thing is working is when the RPM is low, it puts it into park. And when the RPM goes above 850 RPM, it'll then put it into L. So if you connect it to L, it'll put it in L. If you connect it to 2, it'll put it into 2. So that's effectively what you want to see. So effectively, if you can see live data, um, or in the past, I've actually just used a multimeter on the two yellow wires. So I'll use a multimeter to make sure that 2 is giving out um, or L is giving out uh, 12 volts when it's above 800, 850 RPM and make sure that Park is giving out 12 volts when it's below. All right. So that's basically how it works, how the system works. Obviously, the rest of the signals feed into the ECU to, to fool into thinking everything is there. If you connect it all with the resistors, all of your codes will be gone. So you shouldn't have any codes related to gearbox whatsoever. And so hopefully uh, it's a relatively straightforward install. Um, as per usual, if you are okay with actually deepening the connectors, you can ask us to terminate this for you. So we can terminate it. So all bar the red and the black, okay, and the white, which you need to splice in. So those three need to splice in. But the rest, we can actually terminate. But please make sure you are happy with deepening. Um, if you guys want, I'll wait till I have some help and I will try and do a video showing you um, effectively how to deepen these particular ones. These ones aren't too bad because you can actually grind down the screwdriver to be thin enough in order to remove the secondary lock to remove the pin. Um, three UZs and IS300 later generations, that's a bit more difficult. There is a special tool that you can buy. Um, uh, I think it's about 50 quid or something like that. So probably not worthwhile just to install one of these devices But these ones you can actually just grind down a, a small screwdriver. So that might be an option for that. But anyway Hopefully that's helpful Obviously these instructions will be included with everything that you buy and if you have any questions uh, Put them in the comments down below um, You can message us on our Facebook page um, uh, any questions you have or if you want to quote or something and like I said if you are further afield uh, we've got myself I cover UK and Europe uh, we've got uh, Brandon at Quantum Auto he covers um, North America I think there's a guy in Canada Serial 9 um, they supply the same units and we've got Yuri in Russia and we've got Kelvin from the cartoon company in New Zealand and so he covers sort of Australia and New Zealand area there all right but thanks for watching and as per usual, if you guys have any questions, if there's anything else you want to know about, uh, maybe you've seen something, uh, one of our other videos and you have any questions or whatever, please feel free, put comments down. Um, we'll get to them as soon as we can. And obviously you can just message us on our page as well if you want to. All right, but thanks for watching guys and see you later. Bye-bye.